All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, we really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to spend with us. My name is Glenn White. I'm the Direction, Director of Product Management here at Hawkroot Systems. And with me today, I have my colleague Todd Donkey, who is the uh, 3D Experience Product Manager here at Hawk Ridge. We're excited to take you through today's presentation um, where we're going to be talking about Cloud Cat and whether how to tell if it's right for you. Today we're going to talk about the concept of doing cloud on, CAD on the cloud and kind of where is it now. Right. So to start with that, we'll take you through a little bit of history. And then we're going to show you a couple of the cloud CAD tools that are currently available from SolidWorks. Show you X Design. Todd's going to take you through X Shape. Um, then we'll just talk um, a bit more about the options you have when it comes to utilizing the cloud, whether that's for CAD or for some other part of your design process, and then some other options that you, you have available as well. So, looking forward to taking you through this stuff. Again, please uh, feel free to interact. If there's anything we haven't explained right, jump in and let us know, and we will be happy to uh, to revisit that. So, Todd, you and I have been doing this far too long. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and long enough to remember kind of what came before we had desktop CAD tools. And I know my first experience of CAD was using Pro Engineer on a Unix server where I was running it on a dumb terminal. And I like to think that I'm not that old, but <laughs> that evidence uh, proves otherwise. But you know, that's kind of where we came from. Guess, the... you, couldn't, um, you couldn't get, you couldn't figure out how to, how to print on Unix. <laughs> oh yeah, yep. So fun. Those, those terminals were for CAD only because doing anything else in Unix was not worth your effort. But, yep. um, you know, in the 80s, 90s, a lot of CAD operations were done on these kind of, I don't want to say supercomputers because they weren't, but um, but in these specialized environments. And then over time, we saw this stuff start to migrate to Windows. And that was one of the big um, leading features, game changers for SolidWorks and the tools that came around that same time, Solid Edge and Penta. Um, what we forget, though, at, at that time, you know, 95, 96, 97, 98, SolidWorks kind of wasn't finished. I didn't, maybe didn't do sheet metal or uh, didn't have a complete set of tools for analysis or all those sort of things. So when we step forward to kind of the next evolution, of what we're seeing in CAD, which is in many places a migration to the cloud, or utilizing the power of the cloud, we're seeing a lot of those same limitations, although where the products are in their infancy. Um, but there's a lot of exciting technology that comes with a move to the cloud. Um, there's a lot of potentially scary elements of technology that we can talk about as well. But when you're looking at tools like um, the tools on the 3D experience, like X Design and X Shape that we're gonna talk about today, Fusion, on shape, those sort of things. There's a lot of commonalities there. And uh, what we can help you do through this presentation is kind of have you start you thinking about, you know, what's that point in time that I'm ready to adopt some of these tools? And if I do choose to adopt some functionality on the cloud, which pieces make the most sense for my business today? So the first thing we're going to introduce you to is, is X Design. Um, X-Design is an application that lives on the 3D Experience platform. It lives on the, the cloud, on the internet. Um, it's part of the 3D creator role, so that's what you buy. And this confused me for a while until I kind of thought about, you know, the analogy of the Microsoft products, right? X, uh, Microsoft Excel is the app I use, but when I go to buy it, I buy Microsoft Office. And it's really that same analogy. Using X Design, when I purchase it, I purchase 3D Creator. Now, X Design is a new piece of CAD, a new kind of CAD paradigm that is full cloud. Um, 
By that, I mean it is completely browser-based, um, and I can run it from any device. Just to prove that, and this doesn't look too good on the phone, that's it running on my phone. I don't know how I can see that, but you get the concept. The other really cool thing about this is that it's built on brand new technology. And SolidWorks, Inventor, Solid Edge, all of those kind of desktop care technologies, they're built on kernels and core technology that was fashioned, that was designed, developed in the 80s and 90s. And I kind of, the analogy I use a lot is that it's like, having a Toyota from the 70s. It's reliable. It's probably still running. Yep. You can upgrade things around it to make it to make the stereo better and you know, keep the body nice and new, but at its fundamental core, it's running on an old engine, old engine technology. Uh, there's no fuel injection, there's no electronic timing. None of that's in place. So We've done really well with SolidWorks to this point, and it's still such a workhorse for us today. But there is a fundamental engine limitation there that it's running on that legacy technology. Um, and that's why we think some of these tools like X-Design and, and others that are in development are really exciting because they're an, an opportunity to, um, to refresh that technology, take advantage of all this new stuff. So we're going to show you a couple of new things that really highlight what that technology can do. Um, and coupled with the computing power of the cloud, um, becomes a really exciting um, CAD platform for the future. Now, the trade-off right now, Todd, is that it's not all finished. It's in development. Right. right, so we call it, call it mid-range CAD functionality. You can do some things, there's other things that SolidWorks does that this doesn't do yet. Right. So with that, why don't we hand off uh, to Todd and we'll we'll have a look at some of these things live in the yeah. X design package. All right. There we go, how are we looking? All right, here we are in the browser. You notice, got a just a Chrome browser. It's a the nice thing is it hardware agnostic as well as browser agnostic too. So it, really, a lot of those limitations that uh, we were used to, um, those kind of go away, which makes IT happy, makes us happy. Um, but again, let's we're we're going to talk today. This is not going to be, you know, you know, a lot of this is going to be very similar to what we're used to in SolidWorks and. 3D parametric modeling in general. So I just want to focus here on new stuff, like Glenn said, where we have you know, a new a new engine. So some things just can't be bolted on the old engine, but now we have a chance here to really make things different. And you're going to hear me say the word flexibility a lot today, um, because that's, that's really what this whole thing gives us. And so we'll start in terms of feature flexibility first, okay? So Sketch, very simple interface, just one toolbar at the bottom, but again, it's just a widget that's you know running on a web page. I can move it around, do whatever I want with it. Okay, this is a dashboard. So this is where I start my day every morning and then I'm, there's my CAD tool right on my dashboard on, on, uh, on my web browser. Okay, so we're gonna take now, I'm gonna, uh, let's say I got an idea. I drew a 2D sketch and let's, uh, I need a revolve shape for this idea. Okay, so I can take a, you know, we've got a reference here, and now I can take, you know, certain parts of this sketch that we're used to. Okay, and let's say um, I just need like a 180 here. Okay, and uh, now notice the, pro the, I guess what we're used to calling the property manager here. You notice I can either add material or remove material. I can merge it or not. It can be a solid, it can be a thin, it can be a surface. So I don't need a surface revolve command. I don't need a sur uh, revolve cut and a revolve boss command. It's just a revolve. And then I can set what type it is in here. So let's say, yeah, we'll do a thin. It's gonna be some thin walled thing. Um, and let's just let it rip. Okay, so there's my part. And 
you know, I may, you know, this happens a lot, especially, and this is why this tool is so good at the beginning when I'm conceptual. I just, I got an idea. I want to get it on screen. I got to start seeing it in 3D. You know, we change our minds a lot, especially early in the phase. Okay, well, that's what I just did. I just realized maybe I don't want to revolve. First of all, let's put a, a, a fillet on here. And we'll talk about that machine learning or AI that Glenn's talking about. When we make a selection. We're used to this in SOLIDWORKS where we have the uh, selection toolbar to kind of help us. Okay, that's what this is here. It's called the selection helper. So this is new kind of technology where it will, I can go and kind of guide it. I can kind of tell it, this is what I prefer. I, I, I lean, I tend to choose this more often. Um, so I, I'm kind of steering it, but it's not just a, as great as the one in SOLIDWORKS is, um, you know, some code writer just wrote that. Uh, we got to assume with some input from customers and engineers, but you know, it's just the same every time you click one edge and a fillet and it's going to present every possible scenario for you. And you just got to go through and pick one here. It's actually learning. It's, it's looking at what I, the way I select, like, like let's say we're doing, I do a lot of machine pockets uh, and I pick all the vertical, you know, depth edges every single time. It's going to pick up on that and it's going to do that for me um, right off the bat instead of me having to, you know, go through all those scenarios again. So it, that can really help us out. Um, so that's uh, one thing, again, that we have pretty high hopes for, you know, anything that just reduces clicks and uh, makes us go a little bit faster, you know, that's gonna be huge for us. Okay, so we got a, a fillet on there. And now again, oh, wait, I just had a better idea, okay? I don't wanna revolve. Uh, it actually needs to be a straight section. Oops, you know, happens to me a lot. Okay, well, we have what are called super features here that they've introduced and this is amazing. First of all, it let's say, oh, you know what? Actually, I need to I need the bottom gone, but I don't or maybe the bottom thickness and a couple of wall thicknesses are going to be thicker. So it can't be a, a thin feature. I need it to be solid. Okay. Just click the button. Go. So we solid people out there know we can't do that. I got to delete that feature. Yeah. And, and right there. That's a redo. So you know, all 50 features below it. Now I got to worry about repairing them. And again, I'm being punished just for changing my mind and I want that flexibility. So just like that, you know, it's in and now I can go back to a thin and back to a solid and back and forth. I can change my mind as many times as I want. Let's add a shell now. Okay, yeah, this is more what I want. Okay, so now I've got a shape with a fillet and a shell on it. Oops, okay, yeah, no, straight section. I like that idea better. So we go back to the feature and I can change the type of feature it is. So, you know what, change, whoops, let's go with extrude. Okay, done. Downstream stuff stays alive. Like that's huge. That, you know, we're, we're, all that rework, you know, anything that can just help us go faster. We can, I can get a little more extreme here. Uh, you know what, it can't, it's straight, but it's got a little kink in it too. Uh, oops, you know, delete, create a brand new sweet feature now, or with the super feature, I can just turn it into a sweep. And then we'll just add in, you know, another reference. And we are good. So in essence, like it seems like none of your design choices really lock you into a path um, with these right. super features, and that's super cool. That is agreed, agreed. They should call them super cool features because that, you know, it, you just, that's just so much wasted time. All that rework when it was just a, a you know, a change of direction on the design um, where, you know, you shouldn't really be, you shouldn't have to rebuild an entire model. We've just kind of accepted it. And so we try to make our best guess at the beginning, but, you know, things change. So that's one piece of technology I love, you know, because again, I, I used to kind of get, paranoid about it. And I put a lot of thought up front. That first feature is really important. Everything else kind of hinges on it where now it's, yeah, it's not so, not such a big deal. And I know I'll be able to, you know, get out of a corner if I need to. All right, let's look at another piece here. Uh, this is called design guidance. Okay. This is again, we're talking new, new stuff that, you know, we can't do right now. So I have a, a plastic piece here. This could be either, you know, the stock that I have to work with, or I just kind of know it's a basic shape, um, you know, where it's going to be pivoting here. I'm going to have some pin acting on that hole and maybe another pin acting in another way, kind of like a swing arm or something. 
I don't. I know it doesn't need to look like that, but I don't really know what it needs to look like. So generally, what we tend to do is give it our best shot using our intuition, and then we simulate it, and that's when we find out, oh, it doesn't doesn't uh, hold up. Then we start making changes to stuff. Well, I don't even know where to start on this. So um, let's let's let design guidance kind of give me some inspiration or some uh, some kind of like point me the way here. Okay, so with this, what we do is we put these real world uh, you know, fixtures or I guess conditions on the model. So the things that it's gonna have to put up with in its service life, I can do that here on the CAD model. So we're gonna fix that and then we'll add some forces acting in these holes here. Okay. And I'm just pointing the direction here. Maybe this one's acting uh, down. And then we'll put another one here. And maybe this one's acting up. Okay, so I got a couple loads and a constraint on there. Let's make sure I got all the forces acting in the right direction. Yep, okay, so you can kind of see, we get some symbols here, pushing down, pushing up, clamped here or fixed. All right, looks good. So now with design guidance, I have a choice here. I can either do a new design. What's amazing about this is I can just have a sketch and I can put loads on sketch entities and it will just grow apart in there to withstand those forces. Here, I could also do a redesign. I have a part, but I wanna improve it. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. I have existing geometry, but I need it to be better. And we're gonna solve this live here. So without a net, um, so we're gonna, try this thing and so you can kind of give it a target for reducing weight here I can increase the volume but again I said like this is kind of the stock I'm working with but I know I don't need to use all of that and I'd like to get rid of some material I'm just not sure where and I can use symmetry at least down the center you know whatever's happened on one side is it's gonna be the same that'll help on the solve time and then uh, we just let it rip so this one takes about 90 seconds or so it's but awesome. again Important to note here, your computer is doing nothing right now. Exactly. Right? I can go all off and do yep. all these calculations exactly. are up on the cloud. Um, this could be a phone, could be an iPad. Um, exactly. Right there. Yep. The interface delivered through the cloud, the processing, the data, it's all done there. So, yeah, this is great because I wouldn't, I honestly wasn't really sure where to go. Like, I knew, you know, I need some material around, you know, where those pins are going to connect. Uh, but other than that, you know, I, I wasn't really sure. I was just going to start hacking away at it. Then I, then I got to run some simulations, of course, to see how wrong I am. Then we go back and change a material or uh, change some profiles and dimensions and things like that. And it's more iterative where here it's going to tell me this is what the shape needs to look like. So that's uh, that's going to help me quite a bit. You know, that's a lot, of, a lot of less iterations, I would think, here. You know, this will get me close. And then, you know, I'll, I'll maybe need to make some adjustments at that point. But, you know, at least now I'm not guessing. Like, I don't know what this thing needs to look like. So it's kind of like simulation in reverse. It's instead of drawing apart and then checking it, it's I'm telling it what it needs to do. And then the simulation is saying this is what the geometry needs to look like. It's pretty, pretty fantastic. So tell okay. while this is running or is it done? It's done. Leave it to him. That's what my part needs to look like. Okay, it's kind of like a mesh body here, but I can at least see now where I can definitely where material doesn't need to be. So now I can get a plan and I can start modeling a part like this. And I know at least I'm going to be really close this time as opposed to the, the, the wild guess that I, I was coming up with. Very cool. Yeah, so, you know, again, just, just a way to save time. I can go right from here to uh, 3D print. You know, I don't think we're gonna be machining this, but there's some tools here to help get profiles off of it. And then that'll help guide the creation of the actual part. Um, you know, or again, just a quick 3D print and try it out. Uh, you know, that's what this is great for. You know, again, it's not, you know, it's mid-range CAD, but for people on the go and just wanna do concepts and get them printed immediately and get them in your hands, this is a, it's a great little tool for that. All right, so that's a good overview of um, 
of the X Design app, which is one of the cloud offerings that's currently available from SolarWorks. The next thing we want to walk you through here is, um, is X Shape, which is a piece of technology that enables subdivision modeling, clay, push pull clay modeling, um, which is really unique. It's not available in SolarWorks. You can't do that today. Um, and mainly the kind of kernel won't allow it. Um, so it's one of these things that this new technology really enables. So um, with that, Todd, why don't you uh, take the lead here and I'll get the sure video issue okay. sorted out. All right, there we are. Okay, so X-Shape, notice it looks the same. It's just another modeling app on my dashboard running in the cloud. So it's nice and consistent. That's the other thing is as uh, nice as just all of these are gonna operate the same way. The interface is always consistent. So you just kind of jump around from one to the other. And uh, we are gonna show that too in terms of flexibility, how you can kind of combine the apps to get two workflows, you know, one that you never had in SolidWorks and then another one that's, uh, you know, really mobile. So in X shape, like Glenn said, this is just something, this just fills a hole that SolidWorks doesn't do at all right now, which is subdivision modeling. It's a completely different way to model uh, curvature continuous shapes, ergonomic shapes, smooth flowing aesthetic shapes. Um, you know, they can be done in SolidWorks with parametric surfacing, but we all know the uh, it's labor intensive, shall we say. Um, if you're gonna make it once and you know exactly what you want, it's a pretty good way to go. The problem is when you wanna try a lot of things, it can be pretty painful. So with sub-D modeling, um, I've just got a little bit of artwork here. We're gonna make a fin. Uh, and instead of starting with sketches and um, you know creating features, all right, um, we're just gonna start with a primitive shape. And we have, we can choose from several and it's a more just kind of a, instead of again building all the scaffolding okay first i need a bunch of sketches and then curves then I, then i can build some planes then i've got some intermediate profiles now all the scaffolding i can finally make one feature or one one uh sorry about that um i can make before i can make even one surface um here i, I just kind of directly manipulate it at all times so we're going to start out with this body here I'm gonna split it over on the mid plane. And uh, let's see, if we're looking at it here, we need we kind of set up the, the cage or how many subdivisions. And I know it's kind of a flat part, you know, meant to go through the water. So I don't need much in thickness or subdivisions this, this direction. Yeah, I think three wide will probably get me there. Maybe I'll add one more for length. And then I'm gonna just kind of get it at least close to the size I want it. You know, pretty thin, around 0.4 or so. Yeah, let's check that, make sure I got that pretty close. There we go. All right, and then uh, let's see, maybe make it a little bit longer too, five or so. Okay, again, it's, it's just, again, it's very iterative. Um, I can just kind of play around, try things. Uh, that part I love because, you know, again, that, that, that's a lot of work in SOLIDWORKS that I'm not going to have to do now. So here I've got a perfectly smooth curvature continuous shape. You can see here, this is again, compared to SOLIDWORKS surfacing, it's always curvature continuous here, unless you tell it not to be. Whereas parametric surfacing, you kind of cross your fingers, you know, from the drop down, you select tangency, oh, curvature continuous continuity, please, please, you know, and then, you know, sometimes you don't get it here that's gone. It's always curvature can it continuous unless you sharpen up an edge. So uh, that, you know, is, again, is one of the battles with surfacing and, you know, made much easier here. Uh, so the first, let's just take a look at that. Um, I'm going to crease some edges here. So we'll uh, select some of these edges. They're smooth right now. All right. And now with the crease command, it's gonna take those and sharpen them. Okay, and I even have a slider, I can kind of adjust it. You know, it's a little subjective because we're doing aesthetic stuff here. Um, but again, I can get exactly what I want, you know, really easily. Okay, so the base, the fin, I need that nice and flat. Let's go into the box. All right, what else are we gonna do with this thing here? Uh, how about symmetry? You know, it's symmetric down the center line. So let's turn that on. 
which just means any manipulation to the cage, to these control vertices, edges, faces, anything I do on one side is gonna happen on the other, which is perfect for this part. Okay, and I get a green edge down the middle, so I kinda know symmetry's on at all times until I turn it off. All right, so let's get this thing located. And I'm just uh, making these selections on the on the uh, subdivision body. I'm just going to kind of position it, and then I just kind of work it to, in to fit the artwork. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'll put it at the base there, and then maybe we'll uh, you know, rotate it a little bit, try to you know start matching the curve there, and then I'll just kind of move it along on, on a 2D plane. And maybe we'll grab. You know, it's a, again, it's iterative process, lots of little refinements, lots of manipulations. I'm just gonna do a few of them here so you kind of get the idea, but you know, you can always kind of keep refining the shape until you get what you want. All right, try one more here. All right, now just kind of, all right, it's pretty close. Something that'll help here is making that body transparent. Okay, so now I can see the artwork under there pretty well. And so I just come in and start, uh, you know, I can just drag these points and I can just tell them to match up to the artwork here. Okay, it's just a sculpted shape. So, you know, I don't have a lot of hard dimensions. I can put sketch footprints in here to make sure, you know, I don't break certain dimensions. We can scale to certain dimensions if you need to hit a critical, like width or something on this part. And I'm just gonna take these and move them into place a little bit at a time until things look pretty good. All right, we'll do the we'll do the top up here. Just gonna stretch this out. Uh, on this, this is called the robot. Uh, it's like a triad that we're used to in SolidWorks. I can always it can go normal to the surface or just you know to the uh, X Y coordinate system that I need. Let's pull this out. More. And one more. All right, getting there. But you know, if you try to imagine doing this, you know, I'd need several profiles, obviously some curves on the outside to drive it, several planes down the middle for, for the extra profiles. And then I gotta hope, like you know what, that it's curvature continuous. Where here, like I I don't know, that's pretty darn good out of the box. Let's take a look. Okay, so there's that smooth shape, like done in no time. Okay, that's that's huge. And, and the benefit here being, you know, that is, that's, come on, Glenn. You got nothing for me? <laughs> Pretty good. All right, okay, I'll take it. All right, um, so, and then again, the, the thing here is now we can just go right back into this freeform body and uh, make adjustments. You know, this might be, you know, imagine make doing this shape. You know what? I need to maybe put a little cutout, reduce the area. I want a little more speed. Okay, we're going to thin out the base. You know, something like that. Who knows what that would have taken with my original, with the surfacing model. I have to go find the intermediate profile that affects that. Probably the outer guide curve. I got to go change that. There's all kinds of stuff. And then I could blow up the entire model and have to do it again. You know, it could be, can you make this adjustment? Yeah, uh, maybe I'll have it for you tomorrow. Whereas here it took 30 seconds. So that's really the, um, I mean, that's the advantage here is being able to just iterate and go direct to 3D print. You don't like it, get it in your hands. Not quite, just make another adjustment, another print. It takes nothing. You can see my feature tree doesn't blow up. So again, flexibility, ease of use for these types of shapes. It's really nice. Um, and now again, with flexibility, we talk about, you know, flexibility of features. I don't get locked into a feature type. Um, there's also, how about just flexibility of my design solution? Well, I need a sub D modeler, okay? I have that solution, but I still need some uh, prismatic or, you know, parametric type mechanical features too, all right? No problem. If you happen to need that, you can just kind of add that to your solution. And so there's just a, an app switcher here where I can just go and change the model to X design, or sorry, switch the app to X design. And then you'll see, I my dashboard's the same, everything looks the same, it's just now I'm in X design and now I have different tools down here. 
Okay, so what we foresee in the future is, okay, now I need to do some sheet metal geometry. That's just another app. I click that, I get sheet metal tools. Maybe some weldment uh, structures now. Okay, another app, just click that. And if you don't ever do those things, then you don't need those apps. So it's kind of a nice way to kind of collect apps to uh, make the tool that you need. All right, so now that I have this, you can see I don't have subdivision um, features anymore, but I do have prismatic features like extrude and boss and those kind of things. And I can just pick, you know, I need, if you need a perfect circular hole, like a drilled hole, the, the subdivision modeler is not going to do it because the shapes are all concerned with curvature continuity and not being a perfect circle or a straight edge. So here we'll just extrude again. You know, one more time on the super features. In this case, it's going to, we're going to cut material. It is going to be a solid. It's going to go through everything. All right, so there I can still get my mechanical features onto this freeform shape too. And if it's just freeform shapes, then that's all you need. If you need the mechanical features too, you can see how well it's literally flipping a switch and you just have a different set of tools now to use. So that's yeah. really nice. Todd, your clearance on that big hole is not very good. That could yes. be edited exactly. by the ID guy, right? You said it, right. Like where now it would be, oh man, there's a week of my life where I got to go fix that surface model. Instead, it's just flip back to X shape, pull the points and we're done. So that kind of, I mean, that's really going to speed things up again, especially, you know, again, when you're, when you're starting out conceptual ideating, like that's going to allow you to go so much faster than you're used to. So that's a benefit there for sure. Uh, one more thing on flexibility right now, I just jumped into a, is this a part file an assembly file? Like, where am I? What is this? It, uh, you don't even think about that when you start, you literally just start a physical product and that's it. And you start creating features. Okay, so I'll do that now. Let's, um, so I've got a freeform feature in there. Okay, now I've got some prismatic or parametric features. I've got another sketch in here that I want to extrude. Okay, where the plug goes back here. All right, let's set this up. Uh, it's gonna be a mid-plane. All right, uh, and let's do some draft too. Okay, so a lot of this stuff you're gonna be used to. And this one, I don't want it to merge though. So this is new. We're not adding this to geometry. This is new geometry. So it's basically like a body. Okay, so it's just an extrusion right now. Let's add some features to it and see where we can go with this. Okay, so again, since I'm in, uh, X design, I've got, you know, the procedural kind of prismatic stuff, fillets, chamfers. All right, and we're just going to, uh, add this one, I'm gonna use the selection helper now. Okay, notice how it highlighted those four similar edges. Yep, that's what I want, thank you. And again, we've got the settings where I can say, no, I actually prefer, you know, um, ones that share corners or something like that. Okay, so, and then again, I can just with a few clicks here, I'll let the selection helper tell me what else I need. Okay, we'll get those. One more up here. Okay, see how it's highlighting these other ones, similar edges? Yep, thank you. All right, looking good. And there's another super feature thing. Chamfers can become fillets. And then you can change your mind again and they can go back to being chamfers. Um, I forgot to mention circular patterns can become linear patterns. So again, they're just things, they're just patterns and then you can change the definition of it anytime. All right, so we've got this, you know, and now that I think about it, well, in real life though, this is a separate molded part. So I didn't, I was just kind of thinking about the fin, but I'm now why I'm here, while I'm here, um, what a perfect time to like start building out maybe the retaining pin and the plug and the other stuff. I mean, I got all the geometry, so that's what I just did, but it's just a bunch of features. So what I can do now is say, well, now this is an assembly. Okay, and I'm just gonna create a component. And you'll see here, I, when I select this one, it also knows to pick up the child features that chamfer has to come with it and the plug and the sketch that the uh, extrusion is based on and I'll just give it a name
Okay, and now if you look at the tree, we've got a bunch of features, but then we've got a component. And that component has those other features. So again, I don't have to stop and say, wait a minute. Oh wait, now I wanna do the plug. Okay, I gotta now go and create an assembly and then another part and put it in there and do all that or some in-context design. You're always in context, it's one product and you just kind of build it out. You start grouping features. Okay, now that's a component. And now we can then start creating mates. You know, they come in fixed. I can just float float the part and I can mate it in there however I want. We, we can do motion just like we can in SolidWorks. So it, that's what they call that single modeling environment where I don't have to put in that thought, what's the structure? Oh, this is actually gonna be a sub assembly, not, not the top level. I don't even have to think about that at all. I just start drawing, start making stuff. And then I can kind of, structure it as I go, depending on what I need. Okay, so again, there, there yeah. that term, flexibility. Flexibility, your design tool, features, structure of your design. And that's, I think that's kind of what we're, we were missing, you know, whether it was natural for us or not, there were kind of workflows where that's just the way you have to do it. And uh, that seems to be kind of going away now. So we just saw a couple of pieces of really interesting technology. The X-Design app, it's part of 3D Creator, the X Shape app, which is part of 3D Sculptor, but really the decision of what you might want to do to the, with these tools comes down to some of the pros and cons between these cloud tools and this new technology and the existing legacy technology we have with tools like SolidWorks. So one of the core differences is just their time of development, right? These cloud tools are new, they're rapidly developing. Um, and features are being added every release. And uh, because they're cloud connected, releases can be pushed out fairly frequently. But they're at a point where they maybe don't do everything that a tool like SolidWorks does. SolidWorks has a user um, a development base of 25 years at this point. Um, and so it has really mature, robust functionality. So you'll find things in SolidWorks that the other tools I just don't have. Um, similar to that is the range of compatible tools, right? There's partner products for everything, uh, whether that be tool and die design, kinematic motion analysis, steel detailing, all sorts of stuff. And that ecosystem hasn't yet developed for, for the cloud tools in general. One key difference is the computing requirements. Now my SolidWorks workstation, it's probably a $2,500 machine. It's got a fancy graphics card. It runs SolidWorks really robustly, but I may not see that performance on a lower spec machine. So having that workstation is kind of one of the prices we pay for um, doing mechanical care. Now, cloud computing offers the ability to do this stuff without those complex requirements, but not all cloud solutions are the same. Um, some are full cloud, browser-based, they'll run on any device, but others do install um, pieces of software. And this can come with a set of system requirements that may be similar to what SolarBooks has. So that's something to look out for, for sure. The two tools we showed today, XDesign and XShape, are 100% browser-based have uh, very, very limited system requirements. If you can run a browser, those tools will run. As we mentioned going into the presentation, you know, SolarWorks is built on that legacy technology, that old, that kernel that's served us well for so many years. But these new tools in the cloud do offer the ability to, to leap forward into modern infrastructure. And then the, Item that most commonly is referred to when making a decision is how the licensing works out. If you've got a team of people, um, the difference between flexible licensing and a named user or user-based approach, which is often defined on the cloud, can be maybe the biggest cost driver about which solution is best. And we'll get into that a little later on as well. So what else do you need to think about? Well, I like to also think about the fact that not all usage of the cloud is the same. We have shown you two tools right now 
to do CAD in your browser on the cloud um, to take all those processing tasks off your computer and, and go to the cloud. And, and we've shown, you know, there's some pretty enticing te technology there, but, you know, that may not have the full CAD functionality that you're looking for. And look, there's not many of us that can get by with a tool that can only do two thirds of, our, of the job it needs to, right? We are at a position in our, at our companies where we have to do the whole job, right? So there may be some scenarios where, um, maybe many scenarios where CAD in the browser just isn't there yet for, um, for the tasks you need to do, and that's fine. But if we go down the cloud continuum, as I like to call it, there's other ways that you can leverage the power of the cloud, but stick with your legacy CAD tool like SolidWorks. Um, you really leverage that power of having data accessible to everyone and be working on a common model and not transferring files back and forth. Um, and so the second level would be not to use cloud for your CAD, but now use it to store and manage your data. And there are tools available in the 3D Experience platform that allow you to do that. Whether it's um, simple cloud storage, where you're basically just putting your 3D files into a um, in, into a drop bar, into an online storage location where others can access them, others can preview them in 3D. I can send you a link, Todd, and you'll be able to preview my file in 3D without sending you the actual file. Mm -hmm. um, that's available, but also with the collaborative designer for SOLIDWORKS package, which lets you do revision control, lifecycle management, and um, kind of release processes with them. So kind of a, a data management where you're not overriding the old revision and all that good stuff. So those tools are available, and that's a really popular way to work. We're seeing a lot of people start to work this way today where they still have their local SOLIDWORKS that they know and love and does the full job, um, but they're taking advantage of cloud storage, cloud data management to uh, operate with their peers, especially in this environment where so many of us are working from home, we're disconnected from our company servers, we're running over the VPN and running, encountering the struggles that that, that can entail. So I would say the third level of the cloud continuum is just the concept of online collaboration, right? And, and many of us are doing this today in tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams or a um, variety of other things. But again, there's a, a, a platform available to us, the 3D experience that enables us to, to collaborate. And what you're looking at on the screen here is Todd and myself um, and, and some other colleagues collaborating around a project we need to get done where we're posting tasks and um, fi CAD files and pictures of concepts and marked up red lines, all in one stream to keep all that information in one place, right? So when we go back to reflect on the project and what needs, still needs to be done, it's all right there in one stream. Um, so that's another option that's available to us. Uh, to, you know, again, utilize the power of the cloud, but um, use it in a way that augments what we do offline. Yep. Um, and there's, there's both kind of what we call social collaboration tools, which are very free form, like make posts, add comments, have a conversation, to more formal project planning tools, uh, which define tasks, set milestones, build a Gantt chart, all that good stuff. There's another angle to this, where, where you want the power of the cloud, that access from anywhere, access from any device, I, my data is available to, every, to everyone that has permission to see it, but I still want the power or the familiarity or even just to leverage my existing investment in a tool that I've already bought, whether that be SOLIDWORKS, whether that be PDM, um, whether that be anything that um, you don't. Know, there's two ways that you can leverage that technology that you know and love um, in a cloud environment. The first is it's very possible to put your PDM vault online, um, host that on AWS or Azure or whatever cloud service provider you wish, 
then have your users connect to it by VPN tunnel. That's something we've helped several of our customers do. It removes the requirement for local hardware, local uh, VPN to your company's network, though there is still a virtual VPN up to the cloud. And um, really viable option today. You put your existing PDM licenses up there and it will work fine. Um, the other option is to take advantage of a VDI solution. There's a virtual desktop um, where you can basically load your CAD application, SOLIDWORKS, on a virtual computer in the cloud and interact with it through a browser. There's a couple of places you might see this. We use this all the time. If you've ever taken a training class with us online, we have uh, SOLIDWORKS licenses on a service called uh, Frame from Nutanix, you log on with the browser, you're using SOLIDWORKS 10 seconds later. It's streaming the graphics in a way that has minimal kind of lag and um, super powerful. It means we can give our students access to the full power of SOLIDWORKS with no download and no system requirements on their end, other than a decent web connection. Uh, there's also um, an available technology from AWS called AppStream 2.0. And if you ever want to try this out to get a sense of what it might feel like, uh, mysolidworks.com, there's a try SOLIDWORKS link. Well, you'll be using SOLIDWORKS within 60 seconds uh, if you go there. And so that can be an option, again, if you don't want to invest in uh, personal infrastructure, laptops, hardware, that sort of stuff, um, but you want the full power of SOLIDWORKS, that'll get it done. Okay, so when it comes to licensing, this is probably the biggest decision Point for a lot of people when they're deciding between cloud and desktop. Cloud only comes one way. It's named user, so you'll have an individual subscription for everyone who needs to access the software, and it's a lease over time, monthly, quarterly, annual, mm -hmm. whatever time period you choose. Um, with desktop, you have a lot more options. You have those same options. You can buy the software and license it to an individual email address as a named user. Um, you do retain the ability, though, to change that to either license off a single machine, or the most popular and most flexible, I think, is a network license, where everyone at your company that can access a central server can, has the rights to use the software. So if your manager looks at one file every month, he doesn't need an individual license for that. Um, he can do it on his own without having a look over your shoulder to do it. Um, it's really flexible. And so that paradigm just, you know, isn't available on cloud. So if you get a lot is of that, value out of that, that might be one decision point. Um, and it, the software is also available as perpetual license with SOLIDWORKS. And SOLIDWORKS have been really clear about letting their customers choose how they want to buy the software. Right? Many other companies are forcing to subscription-only models. Subscription is available for legacy SOLIDWORKS. You can buy it by the quarter or by the year. Um, so lease it is the right word, but it's also available as a perpetual license. And generally that payoff is about two and a half years, right? After two and a half years, it's cheaper to own it than it would have been to lease it. So many of us don't change our CAD systems very often. So that perpetual license can be a really, really sound investment, and it's a good option to have. So that's always something that's got to be in the back of the mind, back of your mind when you're making a choice. Thank you very much for your time, and we do hope to see you at a session in the future.